what I'd like to do is give you guys just a little bit of overview of what functions are. Functions are what we like to call a relationship or a relation between two sets. And, two, and any set is just a collection of objects. So a lot of times how we like to represent sets to kind of get a visual appearance is we'll draw kind of two circles. Now, since a set is a collection of any objects, you really can use anything to represent a set. Uh, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to choose letters. For my set A, and for my set B, I'm going to choose numbers. And one thing that we're going to do is, uh, for a function relation to exist, what we have is we have our one set, it's a relationship from one set to the other set. So what we have is kind of like an input, which we'll call this, and then this will be our output. So pretty much what's kind of happening in a function relationship is when I input, let's say, A, when I go during the function relationship, my output is going to be 1. So what happens is each one of these elements in set A through the function relationship maps over to another, uh, another element in set B. So let's say D goes to 7, uh, B will go to 2, C goes to 4, F goes to 8, E goes to 9. So this is essentially what we call a set, or I'm sorry, a function. And the reason why we call it a function relationship is because every element that was in set A has now been mapped to an element in set B. We do have a couple lonely elements in set B. We have three, five, and six. Um, they don't have anything mapped to them, but that is okay. It's still gonna create a function uh, relationship. However, if I was going to create an extra element in set A and have nothing for it to map to in set B, this would not be considered an element or I'm sorry, function relationship. So you need to make sure that all elements in set A or your input set are related to your output set in set B. Uh, the next thing that we can have is we can also have two elements going to the same output. So you could also have A maps to one and also C maps to one. This would still create a function relationship. Everything inside of my input set still maps to something in my output set. However, another case where, where you can lose, when you cannot have a function relationship, is let's say I have D maps to seven. Well, if I also say D maps to five, then therefore I do not have a unique relationship because now D maps to two different elements in its output set. So that means whatever I put, if my D is my input, I'm now getting two different outputs. So the best way I can um, kind of represent these two, A to C could kind of be, uh, you know, this is going to be, these will be like your x values. You can go, uh, you know, negative 3 and 3. Well, they both cross at, you know, let's say that's 2. They both have a y value at 2. And this can be represented you know, y squared, where you could say that d is, let's say, you know, that was at 3, is crossing as two different output variables. So this is what we would be imagined as a function, and this would be not a function. So a couple other things left over to go over with functions that I just want to remind you of. So when functions, when we're dealing with functions, we give them a name. And most common is f. And what we like to do is f is going to represent your name. And a lot of times we say f at the value of x. So we say f at the value of x, or very commonly f of x. Now you can also have different names for f. You could also use g of x. You can use h of x. And all these really mean, they're just different names, but they mean the value of the function at x. So an algebraic um, usually expression, we could say f of x equals, you know, here's a function, a linear function, x plus 3. Now, let's say you could also find the value for of the function at a uh, numeric value. So I could say f of negative 2. Well, what that's going to do is rather than using x, we're now going to use a negative 2 in for x. So that'd be a negative 2 plus 3. And in this situation, I can actually evaluate for the function. So f of negative 2 of this function would actually equal 
one. So the last couple things I want to go over with functions is we have our input and our output variables and a lot of times what we're talking about when we're dealing with graphs is we're talking about the domain and the range. So the domain is actually your input values and this is the set of all the values that make your, uh, make your function true. And your range is going to be all of your output values that are in your graph. So you can see, obviously in here, my domain is going to be value of all of my x values. So for this problem, um, you know, on this function to be all right numbers, for here, it's going to be all my elements inside of my set. And my range is going to be my y values. And this is when I'm dealing with a graph. However, for this set, it's going to be all the elements that are within inside that set. Um, the last thing I just want to kind of roughly go over with you is what we like to call an implied dom domain. And a couple things with the implied domain is that's still going to be all the values of all the x values that's going to make your function true. However, there's two, there's two uh, times that we worked with that we're not going to be able to have a uh, domain number. And that's one thing is when we have a rational function and you have a zero on the bottom because we cannot divide by zero. So at one point where the domain will get, uh, where you cannot have a domain is when you're dividing by zero or also when you're trying to take the square root of a negative number because that's going to give you an imaginary number. So one thing just to remind you about, you know, the implied domain is going to be where all the x values are going to be true um, of it for a graph. However, for the domain of this function relationship, my domain is every, all the elements in this set, and the domain, of, or I'm sorry, the range is all the elements in this set. So that is a pretty much an overview for functions.